What's up, buddy? Welcome back. You. Glad you found the place. Well, I told you we'd get you another story about some boys from Kentucky, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, today, we're going to talk about a little different group of boys. We're going to be focusing mostly on one of them. Now, they called themselves The Company. And if you would like to read the book a little more in depth about the whole story, because like I said, we're just going to be covering mostly one of the guys. So if you want to read the book, it's called The Bluegrass Conspiracy. And now I know Kentucky doesn't seem like much of a place that's, you know, usually overran with crime and drugs and whatnot, but you'd be surprised. And this story goes, well, all the way up to the Kentucky legislature and a man named Henry Vance. So, Henry was a friend of the main guy we're going to be talking about today, Andrew Carter Thornton II. Now, I know that doesn't sound like much of a name for a Kentuckian, but this fella, his family was into racehorses, so they had a pretty good farm and a pretty good selection of thoroughbreds in their stable, so... He came for money. Like I said, if you want to read the whole story, the book's called The Bluegrass Conspiracy. But see, Andrew Carter Thornton II, he was a police officer in the 70s, and he was with the narcotics unit. And before that, he had been in the 101st Airborne, and, uh, you know, jumping out of planes and whatnot. Pretty adventurous guy, I guess you'd say. But... They started a business called Executive Protection. And it was a protection firm, you know, bodyguarding and whatnot. And, you know, they made a little bit of money at first, but it was mostly a cover up for what they really did, which was, of course, running drugs. Now, it started off simple enough. They would run bales of pot, you know, fly it in the plane out of Columbia and whatnot, and fly it back to Lexington and land at the Lexington at the Bluegrass Airport and, you know, distribute it out through the state. Well, it eventually got to a point where that wasn't good enough. So, they started messing with the hard drugs. Well, that's when stuff got just a little bit crazy for them. So they start moving all the cocaine and stuff, same way they bring it right back to the Lexington airport, distribute this stuff everywhere. But, they got messed up with some of the, you know, South American cartels. Got in a big thing, you know, they actually assassinated a federal judge you know, and it was a whole big thing, you know, it's all in the book, but, so they had this big falling out, and now, you know, like I said, Andrew Carter Thornton II, we'll just start calling him Carter from here on, or Drew, let's call him Drew, but, uh, see, his friend, Henry Vance, was in the Kentucky State Legislature, so he had friends that, you know, were all the way up at the top. So anytime, you know, he would hear anything or he would, you know, he'd get the message on down to him and try to make sure that he kept things clear for him. And So it really was a, a pretty big ordeal. And then his friend Bradley Bryant had connections into, you know, Las Vegas and some of the, you know, cartels and mafias there. So he would get the drugs from them in the beginning and then, you know, Drew would be able to get rid of them in Kentucky. But once everything started getting all crazy, it come to an abrupt end in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. And early in the morning of September 11th, 1985, a man named Fred Myers went outside his house to get his mail that day. Well, there was Drew Thornton, splattered all over the sidewalk with a parachute strapped to his back, <clears throat> and 
in a duffel bag with 80 pounds of cocaine in it. <laughs> well, I guess that's a heck of a way to go. Now, they said that the parachute never was deployed. And the plane he was in crashed, stayed away in the forest with a bunch more cocaine on it. See, what they would do is they would take these bales of cocaine and they would throw them out over the national forest with beacons and indicators on them. And then people on the ground would go get them. You know, they had gotten so advanced that they had figured out this system. So he would throw them out of the plane with these beakers on them and then they would go chase them. You know, but then once he came crashing down out of the plane, well, everything just kind of, you know, went to shit after that, I guess. But it seems like they just got a little greedy. I mean, maybe if they wouldn't have started messing with the cartels, they would have just stuck to the weed. They'd been all right. <laughs> Who knows? Like I said, Kentucky's a crazy place. It takes all kinds. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. Y'all come on back now.